Namaste. So, in part one, we talked about how the Vaishnava Acharya Baladev Vidyabhushan created a straw man version of Shankaracharya's philosophy of Advaita, Kevala Advaita, unmixed non duality. And they used it to kick around and criticize, actually to try to negate Shankaracharya's philosophy. But in doing so, they created a monster. The monster is Neo-Advaita, which they call Mayavada. Maya means illusion, or literally that which is not, like a mirage or hallucination. And Vada is a philosophy or a point of view, a view usually expressed in short. So Maya Vada means the view that everything that exists or has, you know, so-called reality is actually an illusion, which is true. And philosophically, it is the only provable position. As we've gone over many times, the proposition that the material world of duality is real is unprovable because there's no second universe to compare it to. See, like, how do I know if this is one foot? Well, I have to compare it to a ruler. Then I can say whether it's one foot or whatever it is. So how do I say, how do I measure the reality of the universe? Well, I can't because by definition, there's only one, <laughs> one universe. That's the whole point. So it can't be compared with anything else because there isn't anything else. I know somebody's going to bring up the multiverse and all of that, but that's also unprovable. So... What are you going to do? The only thing to compare it with is Advaita, Brahman. And in comparison with Brahman, the world is untrue. It's a lie. It's a fabrication. It's duality. It's a mere manifestation, a phenomena, not a solid eternal reality. That's Brahman. So, all right. Anyway, the Vaishnavas created a false version of this philosophy, which led to all kinds of bad conclusions, like one should not worship God, one should not study Vedas, one should not pursue morality because it's useless, etc., etc., etc. And they characterized this made-up version as Shankara's Advaita philosophy, Kevala Advaita, and then used it as a punching bag, as a decoy, as a straw man, a purposely weak reconstruction of your opponent's philosophy. And it became their bugaboo. Uh, if you look up the word bugaboo, it means it's their excuse for everything that goes wrong. Oh, we can't attract people to worshiping God because of the atheistic influence of Mayavadi. <laughs> you see, they, they make it the cause of everything bad. Give it a bad name. I mean, Mayavada is a bad name. It's an ill name. It's an epithet, a sobriquet. So it's, you know, right from the very start, it's insulting. Instead of Advaita Vada, which is the proper name, they call it Maya Vada. So this is, you know, right from the get-go, an attempt to bury Shankara's philosophy in a flood of a commentary that's actually based on it, but only in order to refute it. So by doing this, what they did was 
they created a false version of Advaita philosophy. And this false version of Advaita was a hit. It was popular. People loved it. Why? Well, because it's so easy. You don't have to do anything. There's no sadhana, no study, no sacrifices, no, no guru, no initiation, no, none of that. You're already Brahman, see? So you're already enlightened. You don't have to do anything. Just believe and you are saved. Wait a minute. What does that remind you of? Isn't it the same pitch as Christianity? Just believe and you don't have to do anything? Everything will be done for you and you get everything? I mean, it's no accident that this philosophy was invented less than 500 years ago this Neo-Advaita philosophy, by the Vaishnavas themselves. It's no accident because they were trying to create a Vedic monotheism to survive in a world of viral Christianity and Islam. So the historical pressure was on them to come up with something that could be based on the Vedas, but, you know, <laughs> bent <laughs> in a certain direction to pacify the rulers, who at that time in Bengal were Muslim. So if uh, the Goswamis, Rupa and Sanatan Goswamis and their followers, could come up with a monotheistic Hinduism, that would save the day. And so that's what Baladev did. I'm not saying it was right or wrong. I'm not saying it was good or bad. I'm not condemning it at all. In fact, Om, you know, it exists. So there is a reason for it. And the reason for it is so that the Vedic philosophy somehow or other can continue in a world dominated by monotheism. Dualistic monotheism. <laughs> So, anyway, they invented this philosophy, and then it became their shadow. Now, if you're familiar with Western psychology, Carl Jung, he invented this term shadow work to refer to the parts of the personality that are suppressed, that are repressed and hidden from others so that they have a better opinion of us. Huh? Now, every psychologist knows that every human being has the complete span of desires from the most noble quest for the absolute truth to the most animalistic rage and everything in between. So, you're not kidding anybody who knows, you know, what, what people are made of or have seen in themselves what they are made of, <clears throat> that anything is possible. And so they know that this shadow is simply the part that you don't want to show others. So you suppress it, you oppress it, you deny it. And that's exactly what the Vaishnavas were doing. They were denying Shankaracharya's theory. And in, in this inversion, created another theory that really was Mayavada. <laughs> that really was an illusion. Because it wasn't really the thing that they were saying they were talking about. It was actually their own invention. The straw man. So, unfortunately for them, it was a hit. It became popular. Other preachers not affiliated with Vaishnavism started teaching it as a dvaita. Okay, so what 
the followers, the so-called followers of Ramana Maharshi were doing is nothing new. It's just they were the first ones to bring it on the internet and internationalize it, globalize it, and start bringing tourists to Tiruvannamalai and Ramana Maharshi's ashram, Raman Ashram, in an organized way. So, in other words, yeah, they commercialized it, they industrialized it, they sold out, and they got rich. And that's okay, too. Raman Ashramam took the position by, by not taking a position on Neo Advaita. They took the position that, well, people are interested in Advaita, people are interested in Ramana somehow or other, so that will turn out good just by the power of its purity or something like that. Huh? But I think there was also a very pragmatic kind of calculation mixed in with that, because after all, it was bringing thousands and thousands of visitors, uh, rich Western tourists to this small South Indian town. And that can't help but be good for everybody. And so even though, like, I, I talked to the intelligent local people there, and they all know what was going on. <laughs> but they didn't say anything either. They followed Ramanashramam's lead because everybody was making too much money to say anything about it. This is the old story, right? This is how civilizations die. But anyway, it's certainly the case with Advaita culture turning into Neo-Advaita. But just see, the Vaishnavas, by making it their enemy, you know, they're like, Neo-Advaita, you know, Mayavada, you know, making that the enemy, and then strongly repressing it in their own culture, made it their shadow. And so it haunts them. It stalks them. It follows them around. It crops up wherever they go, because just like the fundamentalist Christians blame everything bad that happens on the devil, on Satan, the Vaishnavas blame everything bad on Mayavada, they call it. Huh? And the Mayavadis are the people who believe in it. And of course, they are demonized, they are ostracized, they are persecuted, they are hated. And that's okay, because we're serving God. See? So, yeah, you know, we know how this works. It all goes back to the Roman Empire and when they adopted Christianity as the state religion and basically killed off anybody who didn't agree at the Council of Nicaea, you know. So, I mean, that sets the tone, that sets the example for everyone who kind of follows in that same line, you know, that uh, religious hate is okay. Well, we don't think like that. <laughs> we don't think, for example, we don't think that the Vaishnavas are our enemies, uh, I mean, I was a Vaishnava for like 25 years. I was a card-carrying Vaishnava, a Gita-carrying Vaishnava. I believed it all, right? Until I researched Vedanta Sutra. And in order to get the context, I had to go back to the original Upanishads. And it was clear, you know, from the Sanskrit, even from the translations, that it's monism. Brahma, Brahman, is the absolute. And that's philosophically provable. How? Because everything else is temporary, and only the absolute endures eternally. Because it is the substrate of everything. So... In a way, the Vaishnavas have created their own shadow enemy. Uh, 
that like a shadow, it follows you everywhere. It dogs your every step. And until they can get over this and, and love the Brahmavadis, you know, as Prabhupada did, he treated them very even-handedly. It's just the Mayavadis that really are poison, and they are the neo advaitins because they are the one living and believing the philosophy that the Vaishnavas invented. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung. That Shakti sure is wild. Aung Namah Shivaya.